So system design is tricky, but it does not have to be difficult. In this video, I'll walk you through on the two approaches that I have been using to build massively scalable systems over last 10 years of my career, right? We'll start with what is system design, then we'll take a look at the two approaches and then I'll share the three key pointers that you should remember while you're designing any system out there. But before we move forward, I'd want to talk to you about a code based course of system design that I have been running since March 2021. Right? If you're looking to learn system design from the first principles, this course is for you. Yeah. Because this is a cohort based course, it will not just be me rambling a semi optimized solution thinking it's the most amazing solution out there. Instead, it will be a collaborative environment where every single person who is part of the cohort will can pitch in his or her ideas and we will evolve our system around that. Right? Every single problem statement comes with a brainstorming session where we all together brainstorm and evolve our system. That's where everyone understands the kind of trade offs we made while making that decision instead of just saying hey we'll use a particular queue we'll have the justification why we use only that queue why we use that particular database why sql why not no sql right how are we leveraging throughput how are we ensuring that our system scales that's the highlight of this course this course is taken by more than 500 engineers to date spanning nine countries and seven cohorts right people from all top companies have taken this course and the outline is very intriguing it's very exciting so we start with week one around, we start with the core foundation of the course where we design online offline indicator, then we try to design our own medium, then we go into database where we go in depth of database locking and take and see few very amazing examples of data log, uh, database locking in, uh, in action and how do we ensure that our system scales through that. Then the third week is all about going distributed where we design our load balancer. I'll walk you through the actual code of a, of, a, of a toy load balancer and understand how TCP connections are managed and how simple it is to build load balancer. Then week four is about all about social networks. Week five is all about building your own storage engines. Like we'll build that intuition on if you were to ever design your storage engine, how would you do that? Right. Then week six is about building high throughput systems. Seven is about building uh, IR systems, basically information retrieval systems and ad hoc designs where we design our own message brokers like SQS where we design distributed task scheduler and we conclude the course with week 8 where we talk about the super clever algorithms that has powered or that has made those systems possible. Right? I have also attached a video verbatim as is from my first quote where we designed and scaled Instagram notifications. I will highly encourage you to check this video out. Right? And now back to the video. So what is system design? System design, to be put it in a very simple terms, it's when your customer has some requirement where, hey, let's say your customer says, I need a live class solution. Hey, I need real time interaction. Hey, I need to upload my data into a particular location, right? So there is some customer need, which is then translated into some product and business requirement. Then your product manager or your business uh, team sends the requirement to the product team and product team designs that part and then it comes to you. Right? And that's what translates into that system. So everything boils down to the business or the product problem statement and then you have to solve it. Right? A system, what exactly is system? So system is a very generic word, but what exactly is that? So system could be that what you're supposed to solve could be an application, an end-to-end -end application having a front-end and a back-end that user uses day in and day out. It could be a microservice. It could just be a pure micro, a pure engineering solution where your target customer is some other team. It is not your end user, but some other team which is sitting right next to you. You are building microservice for them. It's a pure engineering solution that you are trying to build. Then it could be just a library that everyone else was struggling with and you thought of building it. For example, building your own web, uh, uh, basically building your own web framework could be just a library that you are building it to make your overall HTTP request response very smooth, right? Or it could be an actual physical hardware that you are shipping where you were given a product requirement and the only thing that you could do is actually ship that hardware, that embedded system to your users or to your customers, right? Now, when someone says design a system, it could be one or all of these three things. First, a high level architecture diagram where you get to see a macro bird's eye view of that system where you design, we are supposed to design a macro bird's eye view of that system where, hey, these would be the microservices that talk to each other and then you are, and, and then, and then this is how the interaction would happen. This is how this, uh, basically this is how the persistence would happen and all on a high level architecture side, right? Then it could also be a logical design in which they ask you to do like you are required to do business logic 
algorithms, core data structures, right? Core storage techniques that you would be using, core persistent algorithms that you would be using, that part. So it's, it's basically not just the high level, but you are scratching the surface and going a level deep into identifying, hey, what exactly would I use over here? And then the third design or, or, or basically then the third aspect could be a physical design where you are supposed to design the storage part of it, the actual IO, the actual hardware, which instance type, which GPU, which processor that you are using, what would be the overall capacity of it, how would the backup and restore would happen, how would you structure the data pipelines and all, right? So these are the three things. Like now depending on what you are discussing or what you are designing, where you are designing, what is the state there? you would be required to design one or all three. Be it your work, you are, then you are definitely supposed to design all three. If you are in the interview, then I would highly encourage you to limit the scope of your discussion and pick one and then solve it really nicely. Right? Not talking about how to approach system design, the two approaches that I've used in my career. The first one is what I call a spiral approach. The spiral approach is where you decide the core of your system design and then you start building around it. It, so then your system evolves as a spiral, right? Now, for example, you start with storage, hey, that you decided, hey, I want to use this particular database and then you move to the next part. Yeah, now that I have database, I'd want, I'd want a bunch of API servers to, to basically support it, right? And then you evolve to the next part where, hey, you said, now I have this service, now I need another service, right? For example, this is the first step that you started with, a simple database, then you added a a, a, a very simple way to interact with that. This forms the core of your, then you evolve. Then you say that, hey, I need a couple of services to interact with. Each service having its own database. Let's say a payment and a payment gateway. Then the next part is you have a payment and payment gateway. Then you need a retry mechanism to retry the failed payments and all. Right. So this is how you would evolve your system. Now, when would you use a spiral based evolution where you are pretty confident on the decisions you are making? That's a key thing. When you are experienced enough or when you know the problem statement is simple enough that, that the decision that you are making is very crisp, is very optimal and this is exactly how it should be done. You are very confident on that. Spiral way of designing systems works the best. Right? These systems are pretty predictable on how they should be designed and you are just evolving them very quickly. The second approach is an incremental MVP approach where you see a bunch, where you start small and then you add more and more features to it just to handle larger, larger, larger scale of it, right? These is how I represent it is, is through non-concentric circles because, you know, you started here, then you added, then you added some part to add more scales, but then you added some more and then this oval, which is, which is very obscured in its state, uh, in its shape because you thought your system is evolving in a certain direction, but because of change, because of scale, it evolved into some other. So it's the way I represent it, it's a non-concentric circles and ovals or non-concentric ellipses. Right? So here the idea is you start with a very simple, extremely basic day zero architecture, extremely simple. And then you think, hey, now this is my day zero architecture. Let's say I got more users. Now what? For example, you started with a single user, a single API server and a single database. Now you hit the next scale. What's the next scale? You got multiple users. So if you got multiple users, one API server might not be able to handle it. So you add a load balancer, right? Then what you do, then what you do, you think about the next step. Hey, this system was working fine. But now when I got even more users, my system started to choke up. So then what you do is you added a read replica to your database to handle the load. Then you thought, hey, some workers or some things are happening synchronously, which could very well happen asynchronously. So you add a, you, then you add an asynchronous, um, uh, so basically then you add a message broker to it to introduce an asynchronous workflow into a system design. So tackling one scale or one level at a time is how you go for an incremental MVP approach where incrementally you are trying to evolve your system to just be able to sustain the next scale. Right? And this is how these are two very similar yet, yet different approaches of system design that I would highly encourage you to pick your problem with. Like, basically given a solution, pick one over other in which you are very confident. Hey, I know the, like, for example, if you know the, the solution very well, go for a spiral based approach. If you don't know the solution very well, start with the day zero architecture and then scale individual component out, right? And then break it into other services or not, right? So key pointers to think about when you are approaching a system design is first of all, every single system out there is infinitely buildable. This is something that you need to understand. 
you can add as many features as you want into this but depending on the time you have for you to deliver your project or for you to crack that interview in either case it's very important to fence your particular system you have to restrict the scope right so that in the stipulated time of let's say while you are at work you know that this is what like you have two weeks to actually implement it you cannot spend more than two weeks to ship this particular thing out so you would be restricting the scope of your design according to that right hey this is only i'd be committing to ship and this is something that you are predicting that you will be very easily be able to ship it right so restricting the scope is very important and even same thing during your interviews or technical discussion yeah hey, restrain the scope so that you design that one thing really well right second key pointer is seek clarifications from your seniors or your interviewer right because every single system design problem is actually ambiguous no one has an idea on how that system is going to evolve so so seek those clarifications on hey is this the only requirement would this requirement change what would happen if this if if a breaks like seek seek those clarifications on are we okay to take a downtime of 5 minutes are we okay to do xyz like depending on the system at hand seek those clarifications it would help you design a very optimal system third and the most important key pointer is ask those critical questions ask those critical questions that challenge design decisions for example protocol a versus protocol b why why are we using http why can't we go for grpc ask those critical decision uh, ask those critical questions that actually challenges your design decisions ki hey i think we should not be using web sockets over here then your suddenly your entire architecture changes right why do why does this need to be real time can this not be asynchronous then suddenly your entire design would change so ask those critical questions because asking them would make your senior or your interviewer be very impressed on that you are putting in a lot of thought you are not taking problem statement as is but instead you are you are you are valuing the problem statement you are thinking the problem statement of your own and then devising the best possible solution out there because independent thinkers are the most critical assets that every single org is looking for and every single org is proud to retain right so one thing in general that you would always see working out for any problem in general and especially in the world of system design is divide and conquer so even when you think about either spiral based approach or uh, an incremental mvp approach we always broke that problem into small component and we solved that one thing so in spiral approach we solved that core and then we built a new service and then we added a new service and then we added the next one in incremental based approach what we did is we took a day zero solution and then we we basically operated at a very small level and then we increased the scale to handle it to the next level and then the next level and the next level so this is very important whenever you are approaching any system design try to break it into manageable sub problems and solve each of those problem very optimally and once you do once you do that when all of those sub problems come and or rather one of all of your sub systems come together this solves the entire problem optimally right so divide and conquer is a strategy that works amazingly well in system design and i would and i would highly encourage you to look for it right okay yeah so that's it for this video this is a very short one but i hope uh, you if in case you are confused about how to approach because that's what the most overwhelming part is so i've given you two approaches to go for it this is something that i personally used throughout my career and and, and even today when someone gives me a, a, a system to design this is exactly how i approach right so yeah that's it for this one uh if you guys like this video give this video thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub and i'll see you in the next one thanks at all